Hi friends! It's fall, it's sweater weather, it's my favorite time of year, and this is the perfect time to snuggle up with a blanket, a hot beverage, and some cozy books. When I say I love a cozy read, I'm talking about a few different things, and I'm gonna share with you books that fall into all of these different categories. This might be a quiet, slow burn romance set in the countryside, it might be a gothic romance or a classic, or an epic fantasy that you can lose yourself in for hours. This could also mean books that have something a little spooky, a little creepy to them, but I'm not going to lean hard into that for this video. Most of these are going to be on the not so spooky, cozy, cuddle up with a blanket side. So let's go ahead and dive into these recommendations. We're going to start with books that are romances. These are cozy romances that I think are perfect for this time of year. Beginning with a book from the sponsor of today's video, Shadow Mountain Publishing. This is Love and Lavender by Josie S. Kilpack. It comes out in November, so smack dab in the middle of fall. If you're looking for a cozy romance to read, this is definitely one that should be on your radar. I've worked with Shadow Mountain Publishing in the past. They've been great supporters of my channel, and I really like a lot of the books that they put out. And they have this line of books called Proper Romances, which is perfect for those of you who want to read romance but aren't a big fan of steamy romances. Personally, I like a mix. I like to mix up my reading, and some of you might feel that way as well. I I really enjoy a lot of the books in this line. One thing that is great about Love and Lavender is it is a marriage of convenience story that is centering characters with disability and neurodivergence, which is cool. That's not a thing that you see very frequently in historical romances. In Love and Lavender, our heroine Hazel was born with a clubbed foot and as a result has had very few marriage prospects and has ended up learning mathematics and teaches advanced mathematics at a girls school. But when the school is threatened to close, she might need to take up her uncle on an opportunity where he has said he'll give her a significant amount of money if she gets married. Our hero Duncan is clearly intended to be on the autism spectrum and he is having some issues with stability in his job and similarly his sort of adoptive uncle, they share no blood relation, but his adoptive uncle has made him the same thing of if he gets married, he will get things that will help him financially. So they conspire together because they're friends and they like talking about math, that they will have a marriage of convenience to help set them both up financially, but this uncle requires that they live together as husband and wife for a period of one year. So this is a very slow burn romance between these two people that have a lot of challenges in life, and I think we see for Hazel that part of it is her clubbed foot and part of it is her gender, that she's curious, she's intelligent, and she lives in a time period where women just have very few options and often don't have control of their own finances. So I think it's interesting in that it's exploring that. I also love the fact that this gives us a a happy ending for a neurodiverse hero and we see them kind of come together. So this will be out in November. If you're interested, go check it out. I think this is a great cozy read heading into fall. And one other book that I want to recommend is something I've read in the past by the same author, and these are actually in the same series, Rakes and Roses follows a romance between an older woman and a younger man, and they are very small side characters that also pop up in Love and Lavender, so I think either of these would be great if you're looking for a cozy, proper romance. Another author who I love to read heading into fall, getting closer to holiday season, if you want something that's got romance mixed with family vibes and just really heartfelt stories with top-notch character development, is Sarah Morgan. I really, really love her books. This is One More for Christmas, and every year around October she has a new book come out. I don't have her new book yet, but I have it pre-ordered, and I just always love her books. I think they have really well-developed characters, and she does a fantastic job of dealing with complicated family dynamics, and they're just wonderful and heartwarming. This book is about two sisters who love Christmas, but they've been estranged from their mother, who was pretty absent when they were growing up, and she, after she has kind of a brush with death, decides she wants to reconnect with her daughters over the holiday season. And so this has some romance elements to it. This has family reconnecting. It's definitely cozy. They end up going to the Scottish Highlands for the holidays, so it's got that kind of vibes. So I think this is a really good pick as well. If you want something that's some spooky serial killer with your romance, you might try The Obsession by Nora Roberts. It sounds weird, but this book is surprisingly cozy. It's got a serial killer murder mystery combined with a small small town romance. It's definitely a slow burn, it takes its time, but I just really loved it and I think if you're looking for something cozy for the fall that has some like scary vibes to it with like serial killer stuff, 
this might be a good one to check out. And then if you want a cozy fantasy romance, I've got a couple options for you. Song of Blood and Stone by Ella Penelope is the first book in the Earthsinger Chronicles, and I really love these. I feel like these are great books to read heading into fall, at least that's the vibe that I get from them. The books in the series get increasingly better. I haven't read the fourth and final book yet, but I have read the first three, and while I really enjoyed book one, book two just kicked it up to a whole nother level. Each book loosely follows a different couple as they get together, but there is a lot more to it. It's got epic fantasy plots that intersect, there are political machinations, there are gods among us, there's kind of an interesting combination of magic and technology. This is set in a world that doesn't have modern technology, but it's like early modern technology, which is really interesting combined with magic. So if that sounds appealing to you, I would recommend checking out this series. Another cozy fantasy romance that is actually a YA classic is The Perilous Guard by Elizabeth Marie Pope. This is set in the 1500s and it follows a young woman who is kind of cast out of the court of the queen and has to go live in this distant estate where there are rumors of the fae and she gets kind of drawn into some dark and dangerous things. It's got a little bit of a romance in it. It's a different take on the fae but one thing that I do think is interesting is that Holly Black, who is known for writing The Cruel Prince and all of these books about fairies, says that this book was part of her inspiration for wanting to write about them in the first place. I, I really like this. It's a historical fantasy romance and I think it's great. Next before we move into more of your like cozy epic fantasy slash maybe a little bit of dark academia. I have some more romantic classics that I really love that give me those cozy fall vibes and I feel like these are great ones to pick up especially in this season. If you like the idea of spending time in a small town in rural England in the 1800s on the cusp of major change into modernity and seeing all of like the gossip and the day-to-day -day life of all of these interesting quirky characters, you should definitely check out Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. This book is just so much fun. I love the characters. It's made up of little vignettes through the lives of the people in this town, and it's really a book about women and women's lives during this time period. It's funny, it's interesting, and it's not very long. It's just a little over 200 pages, so I think this is a really accessible classic if you want to give it a try. Then for a couple of classics that I love that have a mildly spooky element to them plus some romance. I have a couple recommendations. One is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I feel like this is one of her more underappreciated novels. I really love it. I find it entertaining. It's kind of a send-up of the gothic romance. It follows a young woman who is obsessed with reading these dramatic gothic romances with ghosts and stuff, and so when she goes to stay at this ancient estate, imagines herself almost as a character in one of these gothic romances and gets into some trouble along the way. I just think it's hilarious. I actually think you could say that Northanger Abbey is a early example of a horror comedy because that's kind of what it is. It's satire and it's comedic, but it has some like mildly spooky creepy vibes and a romance, so maybe give it a try. And again, it's not terribly long either. The last classic that I have for you is one of my personal favorites. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I just really enjoy it. And to me, this book feels eminently like a fall book. It's got those like gloomy, drizzly fall vibes. This is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I won't say too much about this, but if you haven't given it a chance, maybe, maybe do so. I love it. I read this for the first time when I was a teenager. I've read it several times over the years, and it's definitely a favorite book of mine. I love Jane as a character. I like the idea of having this plain heroine, and I don't know, this book is really interesting. So, maybe give it a shot. Then I want to recommend a book that was just re-released with a new cover. It was out of print for a long time and I have the original the original cover. This is The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Oh my god, this book is so good. It is kind of like a blend of Jane Austen and Charlotte Bronte, but if you want a hint of magic in it, this is a great one to check out. It's like a courtship of manners, but with some dark secrets and drama and a little bit of a speculative magical element to it. It's fantastic. One of my favorite books. I have a stack here of cozy fantasies to share with you that I think are perfect for this time of year, but first 
I want to recommend one kind of dark academia book to you that again is a little spooky but never gets super scary but again this feels so much like fall to me and that is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. <sighs> Look this book this book is so interesting. I really love this book. This is definitely an example of slow burn dark academia with the idea that what if Vlad Dracul who the Legend of Dracula was based on actually is a vampire and you have a history PhD student looking into his legends and tracking him down. There's a lot of time spent in libraries and archives and I don't know this is great. Again it has those kind of like dark gloomy slightly spooky vibes. Libraries and books and history and doing research. It, it totally feels like fall to me. I love it. Okay the moment you've been waiting for. Oh, we're gonna change the battery. We're back with a fresh battery. Let's dive into my fantasy picks. A classic of epic fantasy that definitely feels like those cozy fall vibes to me is The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. You might know that recently I reread this for the first time in many, many years, and I loved it. This is definitely a cozier version of fantasy. You really want to take your time with it, get lost in the world that he's building. The prose is beautiful. It's an epic scale with a world that's just incredible, and all of these like folk songs that people sing in it. I, I just really love this, and I feel like this is the perfect fantasy book to pick up in fall. Another great cozy fantasy series is The Queen's Thief series by Megan Whalen Turner. These are so good. The Thief is the first book. They're very short, they're easy to get through, but the world building and plotting in these is really incredible. And I think they're among the most political YA fantasy novels that I've read. And they're books that are unique to me. I don't think I've ever read any YA fantasy written quite like this. They actually remind me more of a lot of adult fantasy I've read that has like in-depth world building and a lot of politics and political machinations, except that they're written for a younger audience. They don't dumb it down for them and speak down to them. It's just that the primary characters are a little bit younger. The books are a little bit shorter but they're they're so well crafted and if you haven't given these a try I would definitely recommend them. I think they just keep getting better as you go and they have also this element of God's occasional involvement in the world. There's not a ton of magic in the series but there, there's a little bit and I just really really love some of the characters. Another series that is fantastic and completed. The whole trilogy is already written and it has all your cozy fall and winter vibes is the Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden beginning with The Bear and the Nightingale. These are so good. They feel like fall and winter brought to life and they draw on Russian folklore and mythology in really interesting ways with a strong female character at the center of it. And yeah I just I just love these. I think her writing is beautiful. The prose is so lyrical and I just um, I have just been totally swept away by all three of the books definitely would recommend. Of course if we want to talk about lyrical prose and cozy epic fantasy we have to mention one of my all-time favorite books which is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Look I know that the trilogy is not complete. We don't know when or if it will be but despite that I am so glad I read these and I just love them. It's very character driven with intricate world building and plotting that twists and turns and I feel like there's also a lot of rereadability to these books which is not always the case and if you reread them you're going to pick up on new things and new little nuances and easter eggs that were dropped in them. I absolutely love the writing in this and I'm very excited because I'm going to be doing a reread of it soon and uh, it, I, it's going to be great. I'm I can't wait. Another book that I think is a perfect cozy fall fantasy that is intricate and slow burn with beautiful prose that is a lot about storytelling is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I really love this. This is such a polarizing book because some people it is not really their deal but I just I I love it so much. I love the writing. I love the way that this is crafted and one thing that I think is really interesting about this is that when I was reading it I kept thinking that it in some ways reminded me of the experience of playing an RPG video game like the way that some of the scenes were constructed was very reminiscent to me of that which I like. I, I mean not everybody likes that but I like it. And uh, come to find out that while she was writing this and thinking about this the author was in fact playing 
the Dragon Age video games and was inspired by them. And I was like, yeah, yeah, 100% see that. Dragon Age is amazing if you've not played those games. Highly recommend. Um, so yeah, I think the Starless Sea is just, again, beautiful. Lost myself in it. It feels very cozy to me. I think a lot of the book begins in like late fall, early winter, so it's, it's perfect for this season. I have two more books to recommend. The first one is a short story collection that gives me all those cozy fall vibes, and it has an accompanying, accompanying, why is this word so difficult? And it has an accompanying television show on Netflix. Uh, that is The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski. This is the first book in the Witcher series. I loved The Witcher show. I really like the short story collection. Most of them are like dark subversive takes on fairy tales, which I find really fascinating. And again, these have cozy fall vibes. So I feel like this is a great time of year to dive into these. My final recommendation for you is a really interesting fantasy debut that has elements that almost feel a bit steampunky, not quite steampunk, but have some of those vibes. So it's a little bit of a genre bender. This is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. I know the second book got pushed back a little bit, but I'm excited to read it because I really enjoyed this book. It's a multi POV fantasy set on an empire of islands where the emperor's rule is diminishing and I don't know like this is a book where I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to spoil anything but it's very twisty it's got interesting character perspectives it's got a lot of diversity built into it and yeah I think it's a really strong debut so there you go those are some of my picks if you're looking for cozy books to get you into the spirit of fall and heading into winter hopefully with the variety that I have here you'll find at least something that appeals to you thank you again to Shadow Mountain Publishing for sponsoring this video and if it sounds of interest go check out Love and Lavender out in November. Talk to me in the comments down below let me know any of your thoughts on the books that I picked for this and for your question of the day I would love to hear from you what is one of your favorite cozy reads to pick up heading into fall and winter. I do know my friends on the southern hemisphere are not headed into fall and winter but still feel free to leave your favorite cozy read down below. What is the book that you pick up when it is that time of year for you? If you like this video it really helps if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.